Okay, uh, so the excess power you can have for an aircraft depends on several factors, right? First, uh, it drops with altitude, as I uh, said in the previous hour. So let me insert a new page here. Uh, so if you have, so remember, maybe I don't need to draw this again. I can just go back. Okay, so I was looking for this one. So anyway, uh, you're at a, a certain altitude and flying at a certain speed. And you give full power or you increase the available power. And that uh, gives you a certain amount of excess power, right? And as you start climbing, as I just showed here in the previous hour, uh, the excess power is, uh, starts going down slowly, right? Because the required power uh, keeps changing. And the available power keeps uh, going down. And in the end, the difference between the two, the excess power is slowly uh, reduced. Okay? Uh, so, then in this case, you can do the following. You can plot these excess powers as a function of altitude, right? Uh, and there is what is shown in, on this chart here. Uh, so, this is a very complex chart, but maybe I should start with... Uh, um, the, the simpler case. Okay, so this is my power versus speed graph. So this is the required power, the available power, and I'm, let's say this is my flight speed. I'm keeping that constant. Okay, so let me call this V zero. <coughs> Uh, so the black curves are built for rho zero, for that altitude, and this is how much excess power I have, right? And that excess power, you can divide that by the weight of the aircraft, and uh, that gives you the rate of climb, okay? So let me make sure that that's what I show there. Okay, so the, the graph on the right is rate of climb, versus altitude, okay? Uh, so for at uh, row zero altitude, I have, let's say, this much, so let this be H zero, and I have this much uh, rate of climb, okay? Now I choose a different altitude. Let's say I consider an altitude which is 1,000 meters higher. So let me use the red color for that. Um, Okay, so let's say 1,000 meters higher, this is what I have for the uh, required power, and for the available power, uh, I have this curve. Okay, so at this altitude, I have less excess power, obviously. So this is what I have. So, um, so the red one is for rho 1, and let the altitude be h1 corresponding to that. So I have less uh, rate of climb and I can do this for uh, different uh, for many uh, altitude values right for example I choose let me show a third one let's say I climb yet another thousand meters or so and at the new altitude the, the required power is that and the available power is let's say this and I have even smaller rate of climb. So the, the excess power for the new case is this much. And the green one is H of rho 2. Okay? And this brings me this point, H2. And I keep doing that. And as the altitude is increased, this will certainly go down, right? Uh, 
And in that I will get something like that. So what is now shown here is rate of climb versus uh, altitude. Okay? And this is valid for that particular speed only. So this is for V0. V is equal to V is V0 steady climb. Okay, so if I do the same thing at a different uh, speed, uh, the rate of climb values will be different, right? So instead of choosing the V0 speed, if I choose, let's say, V1 speed, um, the initial the initial excess power is this much, right? Uh, this, at the second altitude, I have uh, a different rate of climb, uh, excess power value. Uh, for the other altitude, it's a different number. Uh, so for a different altitude, there will be a different uh, curve, right? I'm just making it up. Let's say for the, the other altitude. Uh, so this is the rate of climb versus altitude curve for a different speed. Okay, uh, now we, we can switch to this graph. So this is what um, is shown in, uh, uh, in this graph. So it's ex exactly the same thing, but the, um, so these are more realistic numbers. So, mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, should there be she there? Okay, <coughs> so uh, the question is, the excess power seems to be increased with altitude. Uh, well, that may be just because my the my curves are not accurate. Because you normally we know how much required power change and how much available power change with uh, altitude. Uh, here I just made these. Um, So these are not very realistic uh, curves, right? So you should really make um, more proper uh, curves. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, normally, if you use the idealized equations, I mean idealized direct polar equation, and uh, the other equations, this is what you get. The slopes are different, okay? So, for example, the blue one is for 30 meters per second. So, at that speed, you have the highest rate of climb out of these three uh, speed values. But it's the, the reduction is uh, more steep, right? And for the red one, this is for 67 meters per second. You start with a lower rate of climb, but then you can climb to higher altitudes. At almost 10 kilometers, you still have climbing uh, power. The green one is for 85 meters per second. And at this one, at low speed, you have much lower rate of climb uh, speed. And at this speed, you can only climb to this height, about 6.5 kilometers. Um, And hopefully it's clear how the, these curves are obtained, right? So you basically draw available power and required power, and you choose the speed. Uh, so at 30 meters, um, at sea level, so this is the sea level plot. So it is obvious here that the highest rate of climb out of these three speeds will be achieved at 30 meters per second, and that's why you have the highest number here. And lowest is 85 meters per second, and similarly you have a very small rate of climb value here. Uh, so why do we do this? So this this plot becomes useful in uh, finding the ceiling values. Okay, so now we can define the absolute and service ceilings. Um, the maximum excess power available decreases with increasing altitude. There exists an altitude at which the maximum excess power available becomes zero. And the maximum excess power 
directly gives you the rate of climb ability, right? Uh, so the maximum one becomes zero. Uh, the, the altitude is the absolute ceiling. So this is the same altitude I explained before. So it was in the other... Uh, it was in this file, right? So this is the, remember, this was the absolute ceiling, because at this altitude, the maximum one is um, zero, because in fact there's only one possible uh, state of flight condition, and at that condition, the excess power is zero, uh, so the altitude corresponding to that condition is called the absolute ceiling. Um, as you can see in the figure above, the maximum altitude an aircraft can climb to depends on the flight speed. Uh, there's a certain speed at which the aircraft's highest climbing altitude becomes maximum, and that maximum climb altitude is defined as the absolute ceiling. So, for example, if you try to keep your speed fixed at this value, at 85 meters per second, then you can't climb any higher than this altitude. So, I explained this in the previous hour. Uh, because at this altitude, if you insist on flying at that speed, 85 meters per second, you cannot have any additional excess power because your engine is already running at full power. But you can still climb a little bit more. And to be able to do that, you slow down. So that reduces the, reduced, uh, the required power, and that gives you uh, excess power, and that excess power can give you additional uh, climbing speed. Uh, so anyway, but there's a certain altitude where the maximum is uh, uh, there's a certain altitude where you, you basically cannot have any excess power at all, even by changing the speed, and that is the uh, the absolute ceiling. Okay, so let me. So let's say if this was your initial speed, V0, as you increase speed, um, as you start climbing, uh, you will finally come to a condition where the required power is, let's say, like that, and the, the available power is like this, okay? Okay, so at this red altitude, um, you cannot have any excess power anymore, right? Because you have the maximum power coming from your engines, and the required power is equal to that, and you cannot climb any further. Uh, but this is not the absolute ceiling, because if you change your speed, you can still have more excess power. So if you come to this condition, what you can do is you can change the speed of the flight. So let me let this red one be row one. The black one was row zero. So let me say that row one altitude is. So let me just type instead of writing. So rho 1 altitude is the highest altitude that can be reached at V0 speed, but this is not the absolute ceiling. Because the aircraft can still climb uh, by changing its speed, right? By changing its speed. 
Um, so if you if you are here, you can change your speed to let's say somewhere here. Let me call this. Let me call it V1. And you, you still have a little bit of excess power available there. So you use that excess power to climb even more. And now finally you come to an altitude where there's nothing you can do, right? The, the, the maximum available power is um, uh, tangent to the required power. And even by changing speed, you, you cannot have any excess power at all. And that is the absolute ceiling, okay? So let me... This, these two are really too close to each other. I think it will not be easy to show that. Uh, so anyway, that's how the, uh, the absolute ceiling is defined. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Okay, so this is actually explaining the same thing. If you go back to this example, uh, we see that at 6.5 kilometers, if the speed of the flight is equal to 85 meters per second, then uh, the the excess power becomes zero, even at full engine power at that altitude. Uh, but again, that's also not obviously the absolute ceiling, because you have no excess power at this speed, but if you slow down to this speed, you will have this much excess power. Or you can make it the excess power even larger by slowing down to this speed, whatever the speed here is. So this is the speed where you get the maximum uh, excess power. Okay, so anyway, the absolute ceiling is not a good uh, altitude to fly at because if you are flying the, at that altitude, you cannot increase your altitude anymore, obviously, but you cannot even change your speed. And if you, as you, as soon as you change the speed, you have to, uh, the altitude will have to uh, go down. Uh, so. Uh, normally aircraft never fly at their absolute ceiling so you, um, always you want to have the ability to climb just in case you need to suppose that you may encounter another aircraft approaching you or that may be I don't know something else for uh, and there may be another reason where you have to climb uh, so for that a more useful term is defined it is called the service ceiling and th it is defined as follows the service ceiling is defined as the altitude where the maximum rate of climb is equal to 100 feet per minute. And if you convert that to metric units, 100 feet per minute is approximately equal to 0 0.5 meters per second. So if the, the maximum rate of climb uh, is 0 0.5 meters per second at a given altitude, that altitude is called the service ceiling. Um, uh, again, so the, this number has to be equal to the maximum rate of climb. So, for example, let's say you have a propeller aircraft. This is the required power. This is the available power. And let's say you're flying at this speed, okay? And at this speed, you have this much excess power. Divide that excess power with the weight. And let's say that number gives you 100 feet per minute. Uh, but we cannot say that this is the service ceiling altitude because this is not the maximum rate of climb for that altitude. Okay? So at the same altitude, there's a speed where the rate of climb can be higher. So, so again, for, because of that reason, this is not the absolute ceiling altitude. Uh, I'm sorry, the service ceiling altitude. Uh, but if you come to the altitude where your required power is this, available power is this, and the maximum excess power is this much, and the, uh, you divide this by the weight of the aircraft, and if the, the resulting number gives you 100 feet per minute, then you can say that this is the service ceiling, because this time 
the maximum rate of climb is um, 100 feet per minute. Okay? Uh, again, just like absolute ceiling, there's just one speed for service ceiling. So if you want flat service ceiling, then, um, well, the service ceiling um, speed is this speed where the excess power is. Um, the excess power gives you a rate of climb value of 100 feet per minute. Okay, so if you want to find uh, the service ceiling of an aircraft, you can do find it by following this approach. First, you calculate the maximum rate of climb values for a number of different altitudes. Again, remember, each calculation will be uh, valid at a different velocity, okay? So let me explain that here. Okay, so this is Again, I'm showing a popular cut because it is easier. The available power, so the maximum is here, right? So this is the rate of climb max at row zero. So this is H, H zero, H zero is here. This is the rate of climb max. And you take that and put this point uh, on this graph. So you, you call it a different altitude. Let's say the different altitude is now this one. Um, this time, the maximum rate of climb is achieved at a different speed, right? Because the minimum power required is here. And RC max is, is now obtained at a different speed. So this is V1. This was speed V0. So that uh, gives you that point. You calculate this at the number of points, and this is something uh, you'll get something like this, okay? And you find the point um, where you have approximately 0 0.5 meters per second, and this will be your service ceiling, H service ceiling. Yeah, but the she budget they shouldn't shim. Okay, so on this graph the axes are different. So the rate of climb is the horizontal axis and the altitude is the vertical axis, but basically it's the same thing. And uh, I show some numbers for this example. So for example at this uh, this is the sea level altitude, right? The altitude is zero. The maximum rate of climb is uh, 1500 feet per minute and it is obtained at this speed apparently and at this altitude at 2000 meters the maximum rate of climb is achieved at 38 meters per second and the corresponding rate of climb value is this much so if you do this and then you obtain this blue thing blue curve and on this curve you can find the altitude corresponding to 100 feet per minute or 0 0.5 meters per second and from here you can say that the absolute ceiling is approximately this much for this aircraft okay and even though it looks like a straight line it is not indeed a straight line so this blue thing curve is not a perfectly straight line but it's, it is something uh, there's some curvature there okay uh, Do you have any questions? Uh, so in all these examples I assume we have a propeller aircraft because for propeller the available power is a straight line, is a flat line like this one and it's easier to follow what's going on. But if you have a jet aircraft then 
things will be slightly more complicated. Let me show that here. Uh, for a jet, if this is the, the required power, the available power is something like this, right? And uh, the speed at which the excess power becomes maximum is not easy. For propeller, we know that if power required is minimum, excess power will be minimum as well. So uh, you're talking about this uh, difference here. But for jet aircraft, that is not true, right? So at this point, the power required is minimum. So this is the speed at which PR is minimum. But obviously, the excess power is not maximum here. Uh, the excess power will be somewhere here, right? It's not easy to see, but it will be, I think, approximately somewhere here. At this speed, the excess power will be maximum. Excess power maximum. And similarly, this will be going down with altitude. If you come to a higher altitude, the higher altitude will be something like this, let's say. And the available power Uh, so at this red altitude, row one, the excess power will be somewhere here, the maximum excess power. Okay, so due to uh, the available power not being constant, it is harder to uh, do all these things for a jet aircraft, but it is still possible, obviously. Okay? And you can find this speed analytically. Uh, I forgot to mention that, but let me go up here. It was... Yeah, so on this chart... So this shows the same thing. For a propeller aircraft, the available power is constant, but for jet aircraft, you have that. Um, so rate of climb. If an aircraft depends on excess power, which depends on speed, there is a certain speed at which excess power becomes maximum. For a propeller aircraft, this corresponds to the minimum power required speed. But for jet aircraft, the exact speed for maximum excess power uh, is not equal to that. You, you can still find that mathematically. And if you want to see how that is uh, obtained, you can go back to 2010 midterm 2. That was a question and that was asked to be uh, found. Uh, so in solutions of that midterm, you will see how you can find the speed at which the excess power becomes maximum for a jet aircraft. Okay? Okay, um, do you have any questions? So, so I think this is all there is to it for steady climbing flight. Uh, so if, if we want to summarize, here's what I can say about steady climbing flight. Um, well, it depends on excess power. Excess power is the difference between the power produced by the engine and the power consumed by the flight. Okay? And that depends on speed. So how much excess power you can have depends on how fast you are flying. And uh, if So if you are uh, flying a jet aircraft then this is what you have. So if you're flying at this speed and this is the maximum engine power engine power, you cannot climb at all because the excess power is zero. Or if you're flying at this speed, again, you cannot perform a steady climb at all because the excess power is zero. But if you are flying in some, somewhere in between, then you can have a steady climb and how fast that steady climb can be uh, depends on the excess power. Okay? And again, the excess power depends on speed. 
it also depends on altitude because if the altitude is increased then uh, the excess power is reduced and based on this you can make graphs that shows rate of climb versus speed of the flight at constant altitude or you can create plots that shows rate of climb versus altitude at constant speed it, or you can plot maximum rate of climb versus altitude and in that case speed changes right so you can do all of these things uh, to study the climbing, study climb performance of an aircraft, and all of uh, you, there are examples to each uh, one of these curves in the previous uh, lecture notes in the, in the previous slides. Okay, uh, so the steady climb is an obvious and important um, flight phase. For example, if you consider a commercial airliner flying from one city to another city throughout the course it may need to change altitude especially if you are flying over congested areas let's say if you are flying over Europe where there are cities, big cities close to each other there will be lots of aircraft flying by and the air traffic control uh, uh, has different uh, altitude corridors for such commercial flights for example you may be instructed to go from I don't know, 10,000 meters to 10,005 meters, 500 meters. So in that case, you need to do a, a steady climb because you're already flying at your a cruising speed and you are told to go up by, I don't know, one kilometer. Then you need to be climbing from that altitude to at, that altitude at a constant speed without changing your cruising speed. So that would be a, a steady climb, an example to this flat phase. Uh, but an even more interesting or more uh, important uh, condition is when you change altitude together with the speed, right? Instead of doing a steady climb, you do an accelerated climb. And for example, if you consider the initial climb of an aircraft, that's what it does, right? So the aircraft takes off at some low speed. You don't when taking off, the obvious aircraft don't reach their cruising speeds. Uh, for example, uh, this aircraft takes off at a speed of 8, 80 meters per second. The initial altitude is zero. And let's say the cruising altitude is 11 kilometers and the cruising speed is 250 meters per second. Okay? So as it climbs from here to here, both the altitude and the speeds increase at the same time. Uh, so this is called accelerated climb. You change the speed and the altitude at the same time. Uh, so let's take a look at this case. Uh, when we okay, so in these equations, uh, it was a steady flight phase. So uh, the net forces were equal to zero, right? So these are the forces in the direction of the flight, in the flight path direction, and the acceleration was assumed to be zero. Now we are assuming that there may be an acceleration as well. So, so this is the end equation, but if you write the previous form of that equation, so this is net force is equal to mass times acceleration, and the net force is thrust minus drag minus weight times times gamma is equal to mass times acceleration, but acceleration is equal to zero. So you, we said that it is equal to zero. And now we're saying that uh, let that be equal to mass times acceleration, and acceleration is not necessarily equal to zero. Okay, so that's what we have in accelerated rate of climb, or accelerated climb.
Okay, so uh, on the right hand side, instead of zero, now we have mass times acceleration, but acceleration is equal to dv by dt. And instead of mass, we can write weight divided by the gravity. Um, so we can arrange the equation in the same way we did in the previous case. Uh, we multiply the entire equation by the speed, and then we divide it by the weight. And this is what we have. On the left hand side, we have the same thing. Excess power divided by the weight. And on the right hand side, we have the rate of climb here. But now we have an additional term, and this is the term for acceleration. Uh, so if you call the excess power divided by weight, specific excess power, uh, then on the left hand side, we have specific excess power. On the right hand side, we have rate of climb plus this term. Okay, so this is the, the more general equation for uh, climbing with acceleration. Okay, um, in the previous case, we only had rate of climb. Now we have the second term. Left hand side is still equal to the excess power. So this e equation tells us the following. If you have an excess power, you can use this to increase the altitude, that means you can use that for climbing, or you can use it for this term, which is acceleration, or you can use it for both, right? Remember, at the very beginning of this lecture, I, I told you that the pilot can choose what to do with the excess power. So there we assume that the pilot uses it to, for climbing. But if you look at this more general equation now, it can be used for both of these things, okay? So the pilot can choose to use the entire excess power for climbing, as in the previous case, or he can use it to uh, the entire excess power for acceleration, or he can choose to do both at the same time. Um, um, and the, the critical thing is the elevator angle. So it depends on how, what uh, value the elevator is set to in, in the steady case. Um, so we can also study this accelerated climb using the energy method. Uh, so if you write the total mechanical energy of your aircraft, it has two parts. You have a potential energy and the kinetic energy. Okay, the potential energy is uh, this. Kinetic energy is expression is this thing here. Um, if you define specific energy as total mechanical energy divided by the weight, so you divide this total energy by the weight of the aircraft, and if you write the weight as mass times gravity, then there are certain cancellations here. So the mg here is cancelled by the mg here, and that gives you an h. And on the for the kinetic energy, masses are cancelled and you have weight, uh, velocity squared divided by two times gravitational acceleration. And if you look at this, uh, this also has the units of uh, height. So this is the altitude, so this has the units of meters. But this also has the units of meters, naturally. Uh, so this uh, combination is called uh, the energy height of an aircraft. Okay? So the energy height is a measure of the total mechanical energy of an aircraft, which is composed of potential and kinetic energies. Energy height is the sum of the actual height, the actual altitude, and V squared divided by 2G, which is the contribution of the kinetic energy to the total energy of the aircraft. Okay? Uh, so if you go back to this equation, the, uh, you can also say that the excess power can be used to increase it will, if you have a positive excess power, that will increase the energy of the aircraft, right? And this energy increase can be in its potential energy or the kinetic energy, or it can be, they can be both increased simultaneously. Or you can even have this. Uh, you have an excess power. You use that excess power to uh, increase the potential energy while reducing the kinetic energy. So there may be a negative change in kinetic energy, and that negative kinetic energy can be added to the potential energy. Even that is possible, right? 
Um, okay, so um, using this energy height concept, you can uh, plot constant energy height contours. Uh, so these are shapes like this. Um, this is a two-dimensional curve. Uh, the horizontal axis is the speed of the aircraft, which is related to its kinetic energy. And the vertical axis is the altitude, which is related to its potential energy. Uh, so each one of these curves uh, corresponds to a constant energy height. Okay? Uh, so for example, on this curve here, the energy height is 10 kilometers. Uh, at this point, the kinetic energy is zero because the speed of the flight is zero. Obviously, that's not a well flight condition, but uh, just to understand the concept of energy height, uh, let's assume that you are at 10 kilometer altitude, but your speed is zero, right? The, the, your actual height is 10 kilometers, and since you have no kinetic energy, this is your uh, total ener uh, energy height. Uh, when you come to this point, at this point, the altitude is zero, the actual altitude is zero, but you have a kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy gives you an, an energy height of 10 kilometers. Okay? So at every point along this curve, the energy height is equal to 10 kilometers. Here, it is all composed of potential energy. Here, it's all composed of kinetic energy. And in all the other points between the two, you have both potential energy and kinetic energy together. Uh, so similarly, you can have such contours for different energy height levels. So for example, uh, at 2 kilometers, this is what you have at 4 kilometers, so these are all the contours you have. Um, so to study uh, the accelerated climb, you can use these energy uh, height contours. For example, if you consider the example, um, initially before you start climb, you have these numbers, right? So the energy height is going to be uh, zero for the uh, altitude plus v squared divided times 2g, right? This is your initial energy height. And the final energy height is this. You have 11,000 meters plus 250 squared flight by 2g. So this is a different energy height uh, value. So you're going from one point to another point on that curve. Let me take all these back. Uh, so, for example, the initial value is here. Uh, the altitude is zero and speed is 80 meters per second. And finally, you reach this point. At this point, the altitude is 11 kilometers and the speed is 250. So you jump from this energy contour to that energy contour, okay? Um, so anyway, our time is up. Let me stop here. Do you have any questions? Uh, so we finished the steady climbing flight uh, today, and we started the accelerated climb. And on Friday, I will continue with the accelerated climb, okay? Uh, so, I will see you on Friday.